Evander Kane has not watched any of my videos on how athletes can avoid going broke, unfortunately. He recently signed a $49 million contract over seven years, but he found himself in the news last night. Kane, Sharks, sued by Centennial Bank. I was confused. Why would the San Jose Sharks be getting sued as well as the player? Centennial Bank sued Evander Kane and the San Jose Sharks on Thursday in Florida federal court, claiming Kane owes them more than $8.3 million in principal and interest. Using Spotrack, we can see that Evander has earned $55 million in his 12 season career from salary alone. These guys earn so much money, I just can't wrap my head around them running into financial issues. According to Centennial, Kane received an initial $3.9 million loan from the Arkansas-based bank for business and investment opportunities in September 2018. The loan was secured by his Sharks contract, a seven-year, $49 million pack inked that May. Additional loans were secured against Kane's contract over time. This is fascinating. I have never heard of this being done before. When he signed the seven-year, $49 million deal with the Sharks in 2018, Evander had already earned over $32 million from his previous seasons in the NHL. I feel like the bank during the underwriting process should have maybe dug a little deeper into his finances. Major red flag of someone who just earned $32 million dollars is needing to use future paychecks to pay off a new loan of only three million dollars. Maybe I'm clueless to this world of million dollar investment loans, but shouldn't the bank be worried if Evander had to bring the Sharks representatives into the meeting rooms to close on a loan? I would have loved to be in that meeting room. I'm curious who represents the Sharks in this process. Why does a professional hockey team jump into a loan with one of its players? I don't see any benefit to the Sharks signing documents to assume the debt for a current player because they are assuming the debt. I understand that a contract can serve as collateral to take on debt, but that means Evander had to have been taking on unsecured debt and lots of it. And the only collateral he had was future earnings, which makes me think that he doesn't own any current assets that the bank sees as valuable. I have so many questions. Per the complaint, the San Jose Sharks were contractually obligated to pay the bank back directly from Kane's wages. This makes no sense to me. The Sharks are investing in Evander Kane by offering him a seven year 49 million dollar contract, right? They offered the contract in 2018. And in 2020, only three years later, Evander needs them to direct his paychecks to the bank to pay down a loan. Remember that professional sports are no different than what most people have as jobs. The players are employees and the team is the employer. If you went to upper management at your job tomorrow and asked them to no longer send your paychecks to your bank account, but to send it to a specific bank directly to pay down a loan, do you think management would be like, oh yeah, that's fine. Can you just send over the routing information? Of course, course not, they'd be so confused, and then they would be worried that you're in financial troubles. This is no different, but Evander is a $49 million investment. Did they not pull him to the side and ask if he needed some guidance? However, Centennial says they stopped receiving direct deposits from the team in October 2019. In addition, Kane allegedly defaulted on the loan by missing a December 2019 payment and has made no payments since. How in the world is Evander defaulting on payments? This is why athletes spending money frivolously is so dangerous, regardless of how much money you as fans think they can earn. Anything can happen, like an unexpected health pandemic that sees league revenues drop 50% and players possibly not able to play. Risk is risk, and spending like a maniac when times are good adds huge risk in case they aren't so good like in 2020. He listed liabilities at $26.8 million and assets at $10.2 million, the article reported. The assets include three homes for Kane. Remember, athletes go broke because they build up a life of expensive liabilities that can be paid for when the millions of dollars are being earned, but they will go broke when the paychecks stop. Lavish lifestyles will drain a bank account quickly when the income stops. Centennial believes and therefore avers that the borrower has directed the team to discontinue any and all future direct deposits of the pledge payments into the designated account the complaint reads, in violation of the security agreements. There are a lot of missing details in this lawsuit. First, Centennial is claiming that Evander owes them more than $8.3 million in principal and interest. But there's also this line, Kane received an initial $3.9 million loan from the Arkansas-based bank for business and investment opportunities in September 2018. My concern is that Evander got in deep into some bad deals, took out more loans, leveraged his future earnings even more, and then got hit with some losses. And then when his paycheck stopped coming in, he went, oh shoot, I can't pay this debt. Debt. Or even worse, the paychecks were still coming in and he still couldn't handle the debt. Centennial is pursuing a declaratory judgment that obligates the San Jose organization to continue direct deposits until the loan is paid in full and prohibits Kane from interfering with these payments. What I found fascinating is that the Sharks assumed his debt and are now contractually obligated to pay off the debt. What happens if Evander quits hockey or if he sustains a career ending injury? The Sharks are on the hook for the debt and don't get any value out of Evander on the ice. I still don't understand why the Sharks would sign on the dotted line. I 
I recently made a video detailing how NBA number one draft pick Anthony Edwards could be earning over $2 million every single year for the rest of his life if he invests his money wisely during his rookie deal, only from his first five years in the league. Evander Kane has made a significant amount of money and could be set for life if he invested his money wisely. Clearly he has not, and I can tell by the comment section on my other videos that fans still don't understand why these athletes have financial troubles and how easy it is for them to do so. So this is your Vegas penthouse, but I know you split your time between LA yes. and Vancouver and yes. here in the off season. So why do you do three places? What's the point of each place? One way that athletes struggle financially is they buy mansions. These are not good purchases. Here's why. They don't rent them out when they're living in them. They are not assets, they're liabilities. Well, Vancouver, I train there. And uh, LA, I've spent the summer down there uh, for the first time just doing my shoulder rehab, so. And what's the point of Vegas? I like to come here once in a blue moon and uh, only two days though. They have this massive liability that they don't even use. Taxes, insurance, maintenance, mortgage, and remember, they're buying at the highest price points in the real estate market. Those houses aren't easy to sell because there's so few comparable sales, there's very few buyers in that market, and a lot of the cost associated with the house is sentimental. Meaning some people will renovate a $12 million house to be exactly the way they want it, but the next buyer is only willing to pay $8 million. That's a $4 million loss when they go to sell, and then you have to add in roughly 8% in closing costs, so you're down nearly $5 million in just one house. These kinds of houses can sit on the market for years because they're so few buyers so they may have expenses for years before they even get rid of the property. My concern with Evander is what exactly has he bought? If he has trouble paying down the debt but owns property in Vegas, Los Angeles, and Vancouver, why wouldn't he sell these properties to pay down the debt and escape the trouble? The real killer for these athletes is bad business deals. These will mostly be private so unfortunately we can't see numbers or the business is bought. Athletes are athletes though. Very few know how to run a business and they attain an absurd amount of money when they're young and didn't earn it by building a business. Business. It looks like Evander took out loans to buy businesses and invest in something that went south. The premise of my videos is that athletes should never have to worry about money after they sign a big deal. If they invest their money in the most simple asset classes, they will legitimately earn millions of dollars per year after their playing days. Look at Evander Kane. By 2018, he had earned $30 million in salary. He should have had roughly $10 million to invest after taxes, agent fees, and personal expenses. If he just put that money in an index fund throughout the years, he would probably have close to a $30 30 million dollar portfolio that would pay out one to two million dollars every year for the rest of his life. NASDAQ has 10x since he joined the NHL, 10x. And if he took the money from the $49 million contract and diversified over real estate, stocks, bonds, crypto, whatever, then he probably could have a 50 to $100 million portfolio of assets right now easily. Athletes are vulnerable because most of them have no idea how to manage money and then all of a sudden they're given millions. They're really young. Imagine your 24 year old self earning millions per year. And they also have access to parties, experiences, vacations that we don't. So spending money is significantly easier for professionals athletes than it is for your neighbor who's quietly made a lot of money on crypto. I said this at the end of the Dwayne Haskins video and it holds true for all sports. You can get cut, a new coach may not like you, you don't fit in the new system, or a random health pandemic hits your league and the revenues drop 50%. You never know and you should never take the risk. Invest your money while you can because your career will end much sooner than you realize. Evander unfortunately appears to be another athlete facing financial problems after earning a lot of money. I hope he enjoyed whatever it is he spent his money on. The money can go really quickly when you're having fun and trying to buy businesses. Maybe one day I'll get to share how I spent $50 million. Thanks so much for watching.